Simply Irresistible is a 1999 American romantic comedy film directed by Mark Tarlov and was written by Judith Roberts, starring Sarah Michelle Gellar and Sean Patrick Flannery. It is Regency Enterprise's first film to be released by 20th Century Fox, instead of Warner Brothers. Pictures Amanda Shelton inherits her late mother's restaurant, but lacks her mother's ability to cook. The restaurant is failing when Amanda meets a mysterious and possibly magical man at the local market. He introduces himself as Gene O'Reilly and claims to be an old friend of her mother's. He sells her crabs, one of which escapes cooking to become her personal mascot. While chasing the crab, Amanda meets Tom Bartlett, a department store manager at Henri Bendel on Fifth Avenue, who is opening an ambitious new restaurant inside his store. Though they're clearly attracted to each other, Tom is involved with a clingy but beautiful woman named Chris. Later that day, Tom and Chris are on their way to lunch, where Tom plans to break up with Chris, but the cab driver drops them at the wrong location Amanda's restaurant, the Southern Cross. Tom sees Amanda outside and decides they should have lunch there instead. For unclear reasons, Amanda begins cooking her feelings into her food, and she miraculously becomes an impressive, creative chef. She makes a crab dish for Tom that is so delicious he's unbothered as Chris, driven by Amanda's negative feelings toward her cooked into her own food, breaks up with Tom and begins smashing plates in the restaurant. Amanda visits Tom at Henri Bendel so that he can replace the plates that Chris broke. When he shows her the space where the new restaurant will be, they have a shared fantasy wherein they dance flirtatiously, and they begin a romance. Meanwhile, Tom's assistant Lois begins romancing Jonathan Bendel, the owner of Henri Bendel, seducing him after feeding him eclairs from Amanda's restaurant, which Amanda baked her passion for Tom into. As a result of her food improving overnight, the Southern Cross becomes increasingly successful. One night, Tom visits Amanda after the restaurant has closed and after tasting a dish of hers, they begin to kiss and start floating. Tom panics and breaks things off with Amanda, believing she's some kind of witch who is manipulating his feelings with magic. When Amanda goes to confront Tom one last time at his office, she witnesses the violent tantrum and resignation of a celebrity French chef hired for Tom's new restaurant. When Jonathan realizes that Amanda cooked the eclairs Lois had fed him, he demands that Tom hire her for the opening, despite his protests. On opening night, Amanda is initially shunned by the snobbish French staff and that, coupled with her continued heartbreak over Tom, causes her to unknowingly cook her sorrow into one of the first courses, causing the entire restaurant to sob uncontrollably. She eventually overcomes her self-doubt and reaches her full potential as a chef, and the opening is a complete success. Stunned but enchanted by the remarkable effect Amanda's food has had on the guests, Tom goes after Amanda as she's leaving the opening. He convinces her to come back and admits his love for her, and the two reconcile on the dance floor, not noticing Jean is gleefully conducting the orchestra behind them, implying the magic that sparked in Amanda came from him. According to Mark Tarlov, the director, the conception of the film arose from intersection of eating and drinking and romance, part of my interest with the movie was this idea of being able to bend reality how food and wine actually bends. Time and space, the whole Einsteinian view of bending time and space based on your position relative to the events that are happening. Tarlov's wife, Judith Roberts, wrote the screenplay based on a story co-developed by Roberts and Tarlov. According to Tarlov, the script was about a middle-aged young woman, who had never found romance before because she never found her passion. And when she found her passion, which was cooking, romance followed the director pitched the film to Holly Hunter, who he intended to play the lead role, but the studio did not want her to play the part. Sarah Jessica Parker was then wanted but the studio felt she was too old for the part. The character was then rewritten to a 20-year-old woman with Sarah Michelle Gellar landing the role. The studio wanted to cash in on her success from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Simply Irresistible was poorly received by critics. Though the acting has received praise, the screenplay has received criticism. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has a rating of 16%, based on 31 reviews, with an average rating of 3. 95 tenths. The site's consensus states, simply irresistible is simply not. On Metacritic, the film has a score of 27 out of 100, based on 21 critics, indicating generally unfavorable reviews. Audiences surveyed by CinemaScore gave the film a grade B. Roger Ebert of Chicago Sun-Times gave the film 3 out of 4 stars, and stated old-fashioned and obvious, yes, like a featherweight comedy from the 1950s. But that's the charm. John Petrikas from Chicago Tribune gave the film a negative review, 
falls prey to the all-too-contemporary problem of complicating the tale until the ending is not only obvious, but prayed for between yawns. Tom Meek from Film Threat described the film as insipid, maudlin mush. The film opened at number 9 at the North American box office making $2.2 2 million US dollars in its opening weekend. Little King, The Hollow Bodies Busted, Jennifer Page Falling, Donna Lewis Got the Girl, Rice the Angel of the Forever Sleep, Marcy Playground Take. Your Time, Laurie Carson Beautiful Girls, Chris Lloyd Once in a Blue Moon, Sydney Forest Parkway, The Hang-Ups Our Love is Going to Live Forever, Spain Bewitched. Bothered and Bewildered, Catalina That Old Black Magic, Jessica The Film Contains References to Four Musical Films of Fred Astaire. Thanks for watching.